Hey everyone, it's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a seamless texture like this one using Affinity Photo for iPad. Now, while I'll be using the iPad version of the app, if you're following along on the desktop version, the process is actually the same. The tools are just slightly different, and I'll note that as I go through this tutorial. I'm going to be using an image that I took of some mulch. You can use any photograph you'd like. You could even grab a photograph from the stock studio and use one of their free use images to create a texture. Just make sure that whatever you use, it's a high resolution image. And the reason for that is on the back end, you don't wanna run into any sort of pixelation. Now I would use a seamless texture like this one as the background texture for a digital art brush in the Affinity Suite, Procreate, Photoshop, and others. It's important that it's a seamless texture because the larger I use the brush, the more likely I am to see the seams if I don't correct for that up front. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process as to how you can create your own seamless textures. All right, so I've opened up the image of Mulch as a new document in Photo. And again, I took this at a high resolution so that I can do some cropping and some other edits and not worry about any sort of pixelation. Now, one thing I want to note, you can use just about any photograph you take to create texture. Just know up front that some are going to be a little bit more challenging than others to get to the end result. The reason for that is once I create the offset of this texture, there's going to be some edits that I need to make because there's going to be some cloned artifacts that I need to take care of. In an image like this one, there's a lot of information in it, which means I have a little wiggle room to fudge things, whereas a different image, I might not. So it would take me a little bit longer to get it to where I want. It's not impossible, but again, it may just take a little bit longer as it may be a little bit more challenging. So as I'm going to be using this as the background texture for a brush, I need to make sure that it's a one to one ratio. And right now this is a three to four ratio. So I'm going to select my crop tool. If you ever can't find something, just tap and hold on the question marks and these labels will pop up. Now my screen is flipped for a left-handed person, so they might be just opposite of one another. I've just used this crop tool on another image, so it's already showing custom ratio, but if yours isn't, in the contextual menu, just make sure that says custom ratio, and then change the X and Y to one to one. Now, before you hit apply, you have the ability to move this box around to wherever you want it on your image. You can also crop in, which I'm gonna go ahead and do on mine. And this is where it's important to have a high resolution image. As you crop in, if you don't, that's where you're going to begin to see pixelation. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And I'm getting one step closer to creating the seamless texture, but there's one final step that I have to take. The crop that we just did was non-destructive, which means the information that we just cropped away is actually still there. If I go to my layer studio, you can see I still have a rectangular image here. And that's going to cause issues with the affine filter that we're going to use to create the offset to form the seamless texture. So before I move forward, the first thing I want to do is flatten this image. In the iPad version, I'm going to go to my Documents menu and choose Flatten. In the desktop version, you can right-click on the layer and choose Rasterize and Trim. All right, now that we've flattened our document, we're all set to use the affine filter to offset this image and create the seamless texture. On the iPad version, I want to make sure that my image is selected and I'll go to my filter studio here, which looks like a little funnel. And under all filters, it's the second option down. If you can't see this, just go ahead and tap in the middle until you find all filters. I'll go ahead and select that. On the desktop version, you can find a fine under filters, distort, and it's somewhere towards the bottom of that menu. Now, if I start scrolling up on my offset here, you can see that very distinct seam that I was talking about earlier. So right now it's on the edges. We actually want to force these seams into the middle of our image so that we can remove them. So I'm going to go ahead and select my offset X here and tap 50. And I'm going to do the same thing on the Y. And it's going to create this little quadrant image here. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Now, obviously this doesn't look the way that we want it to, but at this point we do technically have a somewhat seamless image. And by that I mean on the outer edges, it is actually seamless. If you take a look, for example, at this little piece of bark, it's cut off at the top, but it's directly below that on the bottom here. The same goes for this little piece of white bark. It's cut off here, 
but it's completed over here. So if we were to tile that, at least the outer edges are actually seamless at this point. But now we need to correct for the very distinct seams in the middle. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that next. I'm going to use a couple of different tools to correct this seam here so that we can prepare it to export and use as a texture. The first thing I'm going to do is make a selection of my seams and use inpainting. Now on the iPad version, there's an inpainting brush. On the desktop version, there's both a brush and an inpainting function under the edit menu. So I've gone to my selection menu and I'm going to select my rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to make a selection around this vertical seam then I'll go ahead and change my mode to add and make a selection around the horizontal seam. And I'm staying pretty close to the seam itself. I don't wanna make it too wide. Now I have this little cross selection and hopefully you can see that in the video. At this point, I want to use the in painting brush to do a content aware fill within that selection. So I'll go back to my photo persona and I'm going to go to my clone brush and tap twice and then choose in painting. Now again, on the desktop version at this point, you could either use the in-painting brush or you can go to edit and choose in-painting and it will automatically do it for you. So I've got my brush relatively large and I'm just going to keep brushing in here. You'll see it mask and I'm not going to lift my pencil until I have everything covered. Once I do, it's going to go ahead and sample the area and it's going to correct it however it sees fit. I'm going to go ahead and hold my finger down, hit deselect, and now you can see that that very distinct seam is gone. The problem is what it leaves behind are some artifacts like this one. So if I zoom in, you can see that when it sampled the area, it repeated certain things. So I've got some repetition there, and probably down here, I've got some images or image issues. So I'm going to go ahead and correct for that next using the patch tool. Okay, the patch tool can be found under the clone brush as well, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now, when I mentioned earlier about the more information in an image, the easier it is to create the seamless texture, this is what I was talking about. So I'm going to have a little bit more leeway to hide things and hide some of these changes than I would if I had a less complex photograph. Again, it's never impossible to create something. It may just take a little bit longer with certain ones. So I've got my patch tool selected and I'm going to start up here. And I'm just going to draw a selection around, actually I think I'll back out of that and choose this entire thing here because that's all a duplicate. And then I'm going to tap and drag. And I want to drag it somewhere that looks like it's going to fit in the space that I'm trying to patch into. I want to make sure that I stay away from this area itself because otherwise I'm just going to end up having to fix another clone. So I think this looks good right about here. I'm going to go ahead and release and then tap and it's going to patch that into place. And I think that looks pretty good. I have a little bit of an issue here with this little maple pod here, but I'll just go ahead and drag over. And I also try to stay within the same kind of light value so that I don't, it doesn't look too obvious that I just patch something in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom around here. I have this little spot here that doesn't look great. So I'll go ahead and again, drag around to find something that fits nicely in there. All right, that worked nicely. I don't see anything, oh, nope, we have some spots over here. So let's go ahead and take care of this one and I think that might be it. All right, I could probably work on this a little bit longer, but for the purposes of the tutorial and keeping it at a reasonable length, I'm gonna go ahead and call this done. There are a few additional adjustments that I want to make to prepare it to use as a texture background for a brush. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so one of the first things I want to do is to even out some of the light and dark values here, and I'm going to do that using the Dodge brush. So this area here is a little bit dark compared to the rest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make my brush pretty big, and I'm gonna start running it over this area just to bring up some of the light values. I might just go ahead and change this to shadows. That might give me a little bit more impact. 
And I'm not trying to go overboard with it. I really just want to bring it up just slightly. You could also go the opposite direction and use the burn tool if something's lighter than something else. I find that using the dodge brush just works better for me. The next thing I want to do is convert this to a black and white image. So I'm going to go to my adjustments and I'm just going to choose black and white and I'm going to play with my values here. So since this image had some yellow in it, it's going to have a big impact if I start moving this up and down. Same with the red. And what I'm aiming for is a nice contrast because it's the contrast that's going to give me the texture when I use it later. So let me go ahead and just play around with the red here. And the green, blue, cyan, and magenta aren't going to give me as much of an impact because they don't exist as much in the image. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my adjustments now. And this time I want to find levels. So I'll go ahead and select levels. And I'm just going to choose darken to begin with. And then I'm going to make adjustments to the sliders here. Again, I'm looking for some nice contrast. So I'm going to bring my whites down a little bit and play with the blacks. And then I'll use play with the gamma in between. All right, I like that. So these darker spots are going to look really awesome with the texture later. Now at this point, you could have kept it colored if you wanted to use it as a colored texture. You could turn it black and white. You could export this and use it as a simple overlay. You could bring it into another document and create a bitmap texture out of it. Again, what I would use it for is a brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and export it as a PNG file that I can use later when I'm going ahead and adding texture to my brushes. Okay, I've gone into my documents menu and selected export. And at this point, I just wanna check and make sure that my width and height, there's still a one-to-one -one ratio. I could go ahead and name this and save it off to my files in the cloud, for example, or I could just go ahead and use the share function and airdrop it to my laptop or save it here on my iPad. Go ahead and save yours off however you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel on mine because I've already saved something similar to this. And that is it. That's how you can create a seamless texture using Affinity Photo. If you have any questions about the process, please feel free to ask in the discussion below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.